to this 4 o'clock deadline. Um, and what I'm going to do is uh, show you uh, two of the websites. Uh, first one is the uh, data the data website for the uh, Vita Green system that uh, <coughs> Nate mentioned. Um, Gridpoint is the parent company and Vita Green is the, the hardware company. Has anybody got a pointer? I'll bring a pointer with me. These are our Doing ones twice? <laughs> okay, well done. Well, I'll use this out here. Okay, I'll use the, I guess, the, the mouse. Uh, the, the first thing uh, you see over here is a little picture of the car and it says the state is plugged in. So the car is plugged in out front, so it knows that. The fuel level, which would be the gas level, is 60%. means I got 60% of my, my gas tank full. The battery level is 100%, so it's fully charged, as Dave mentioned. Um, typically, and I'll show you some detailed data in my commute into work, it's, uh, it's about seven miles today. Uh, it'll charge in a, in a matter of a, a fully charged in a couple hours. It, it gets you the location, because uh, Nate mentioned it has a GPS system, I'll show you that. And AC power is what it's actually uh, taking, and since it's 100% charged, it's taking no, uh, uh, no additional uh, power. Then over here on this top line here, it shows each day's performance, gives you a week's worth of data. Uh, so this bar to the far right is today, uh, Friday. Uh, let's look at uh, yesterday, Thursday, and you can line it up here. Uh, the blue lines, or the blue color, means that uh, we were in electric mode, so yesterday it looks like I was uh, fully electric. Uh, we'll look at some details. Uh, this is Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Where am I on Wednesdays, Hannah? Battle Creek. Battle Creek. So I had to drive through Battle Creek. How far is it to Battle Creek? It's about uh, 33 miles for me one way. Nate mentioned the, the range is in the 20 to 30 mile range. But I had to also make a side trip over to KCC, Kellogg Community College. Um, so you can see here that the blue uh, was the battery and then we used some gas also. But the other days here on Tuesday and Monday, and I'll talk about Sunday in a little bit, last Saturday and Friday. So these are common days that I can get by almost exclusively on electric mode. Sunday I had a family reunion in Detroit and obviously it's further than that, uh, farther than that, 20 to 30 miles uh, eight mentioned. Uh, so we had a little bit of battery and a lot of gas. So the beauty of the plug-in hybrid compared to the strict uh, pure electric car is once the battery pack runs out, this extra battery pack that, uh, that Nate mentioned, A123 battery pack, the car seamlessly automatically reverts back to its normal hybrid mode without a glitch, without a hiccup. You don't even notice it, and it just continues on down the road. If this was a pure electric and I had a 20 to 30 mile range, I couldn't make it to Detroit unless I stopped and charged every 20, 30 miles. It might take me a week to get there and back. So I'm real, I'm a real fan of the plug-in hybrid electric cars. And I speak from experience. I drove a pure electric uh, car for eight years, and it wasn't uh, charged with the wind; it was charged with the sun. And uh, it had a range of about 45, so that was my maximum. If I went 45, the batteries were done. I had to shut down and plug in or wait for it to charge up. The chart below this one, this line here, same thing every day. Uh, the blue line means it's the system's talking uh, through the data modem that, that uh, Nate mentioned. These yellowish kind of lines here are actually drive times. <coughs> and then if they're, the shading is depending upon whether you, you can't really see it on the screen because the color isn't too good, uh, whether you're um, using battery or gas. And so each day, uh, like today, I get a, a, a summary of the um, Activity. So I made two trips, one into work and then one from the parking lot to the park out front. It gives you time, miles, and fuel, the gas I use. 0, 0.0 gallons. Pretty good, huh? Um, the DC energy used and the cost based on the electrical cost. It does last seven days, last 30 days. Um, we installed the system, I think about two weeks ago. So it's, it's fairly new. Uh, we got a grant. Uh, from Consumers uh, Energy Foundation, so we'll have to update our acknowledgement slide. Is Body Shrest in the audience? Pete Gustafson? Okay, there are two partners in crime. They're, they're doing other work with that grant. Uh, but Consumers Energy Foundation uh, provided some money to help us get this installed. Um, uh, so today, the interesting column is, is maybe over on the, this uh, one here. So today, for those two trips, I had a combined uh, gas mileage of 
miles per gallon. Anybody do that good on their cars coming driving into school today? Okay. Now, what had happened is on the longer trip, and, and Nate mentioned the influence of the length of trip. So the early morning trip, I probably did better than that. But there's a little short trip from the parking deck to park up front because it was short. We tend not to do so good on the gas miles because cars got to warm up and do all those kind of things. Okay. Now, for the, if you're uh, ready for all the data. Uh, we get a timeline uh, for each day, and it talks about the trip we took, uh, charging, trip charged. Every time you have an event, this system it records. It's recording it right now as we're parked out there, as you can see from the data. And it's continuously uploading that data to the file server. And I'm just looking at the data from the file server. And, uh, and that's available to us. I'm showing you the, the general user, uh, user interface. There's also uh, an analyst and a interface that gives me gobs and gobs of data, and that's what Nate and I use to, to do our analysis. Um, but over here on the, um, the columns here, I just got the, the battery uh, beginning and end state. Uh, so the, uh, when you start off, uh, the battery, usually you like it to be full or nearly full, and then when you end up, um, that shows you uh, how much your battery capacity is. And Nate mentioned this, this GPS function. It looks like it's trying to come up. It doesn't show up very good, does it? <coughs> okay, let me close that out and come back and look at that later. Uh, and then trips. Uh, so each trip that I took, and I only made those two trips today. Um, so coming into work this morning, coming to the university at 718, it tells me how many minutes it was, how many miles, and how much gas it used. So that zero point zero gallons was true because I didn't show you that next decimal point, right? So it used uh, um, five hundredths of a gallon of gas. So how in the heck does it measure that? Well, it's got a very high accuracy mass flow meter on the car that measures that for us. Uh, battery capacity, or the battery at the starting and finishing of the trip. So on my trip into work this morning, it was 145.76 miles per gallon. Pretty incredible. And then that short little trip from the parking deck out front, that was only 54 miles per gallon. So when you average the two together based upon the, the data, um, it tells you. I'm going to try this one more time, see if this works. Well, the GPS, the uh, something's wrong with the projector link there. Let me go back one more time, because this is how I keep track of my kids when they borrow my car. <laughs> okay, so it's got, in addition to the cell phone data link, it's got a GPS link. So when I left home, this is where I live, this shows the route that I went, and it, this is how it collects data, like the miles and, the, and, um, and at uh, location, because it knew the location where we're parked at now, um, and, and whatnot. So that, that's a pretty cool feature, especially to keep tabs on the kids when they borrow the car and say they went to work and they actually went somewhere else. Okay, and this is the charge session. So like the trips, for each charge session, I've got data associated with that charging. Uh, so it knows right now that I'm, I'm charging out front. I plugged in at uh, 2.16 and it's been charging for an hour and 22 minutes. It's really not charging now because the batteries are fully charged, but it's still plugged in. It doesn't know where I'm at, so they call, it calls it an unknown, unknown unnamed location. But um, where I was parked most of the day, starting at 7.39 this morning for that six hours before I moved the car, it knows that location is my uh, plug-in location in the parking lot. We just uh, identified that as WMU and, and work. And it gives you all the, the characteristics um, uh, in terms of the data. Now, there's a lot more data if you're really a, a data fanatic, and, and we just have the boxes that are checked off are the ones we have, and there's gobs and gobs of data. You notice I didn't check out all, check off all of the electrical ones because I'm not an electrical engineer. So if I have any electrical engineering students out in the audience that want to get involved in the project, we could sure use your help uh, because we're not doing a lot with the electrical measurements at, at this time. Uh, so there's, it's just gobs of data, and, and Nate and I uh, work on it. And similarly, over in the uh, trip area, You've got uh, lots of different data there to, uh, to look at. So the data you get for the charging versus the driving is obviously going to be different. Okay, let's see. Um, that's about all I want to show you on that site. So let me, close, let me minimize that. The last thing I'll, that I'm, I'm going to switch hats.